everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is our weekly show where we break down the latest news in the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining me this afternoon is Josh McCuga. What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? So glad you're back with us. Uh, before we get into the show and we do our introductions, I would just like to say that go hug somebody. It's a weird time in this country, in this world, and um, it's way easier to be nice and kind to people than it is to be mean. Uh, so love your fellow man. Don't hate them. All right. Very well said. Also, here is Sasha Pearl Raver. Just so you know, the YouTube comments just went, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but so true. I'm going to hug you right now and you're going to make me cry. And by the way, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank Pittsburgh. You. If you didn't notice, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Cody, go to my camera, damn it. Oh, there you go. You need yeah. that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and also here is David Griffin. A man is someone and his name is David Griffin. So I'm here to, uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> David Griffin. Anybody else get that reference? You're from no. Easteros, though, because you grew up in New York. I grew up in Western New York. grew up in Buffalo, yeah. So it's West Eastern Ros. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Western New York. Oh, Western, I get it. Oh, sorry, I was a little slow there. I'm, I'm, I'm so bad with it. So I, I, I didn't know where you were going with that, Sasha. It took me some. I'm so slow with jokes. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. That, that wasn't was, a good joke. No, no, it was all right. No, it's, I'm slow. Your outro last week led perfectly into oh, your man. intro. Yeah, perfect. I loved it. <laughs> uh, all right, Sinead, what's up first? There are only two episodes of Game of Thrones left this season. I'll give you guys a minute to dry your eyes. There is great news, though. Last week, Entertainment Weekly was the first report that the season finale and the continuing battle for the Iron Throne will be 69 minutes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure Sasha and Josh <laughs> are giggling right now, so let's not cut to their cameras. The finale, titled The Winds of Winter, will be directed by Miguel Sapochnik and airs June 26th. Josh, don't make any 69 jokes and talk about Game of Thrones. <laughs> like how you remind yourself not to make any jokes. <laughs> nope, nope, too late. Come on. Look at that face. That's the 69 face. Come on, guys. It's my favorite number. I remember growing up. Aside, I remember, That's your 69 face? <laughs> <laughs> What's my 69 face? That's it. That's See, this, is what, this is what we call giggle time. I don't know if you had this when you were in high school or junior high, and we'd go through like, the whole like puberty talk and the birds and the bees, and our teacher would be like, okay, now let's have giggle time. And I feel like something, and that's giggle time. Josh is doing giggle time right now. Look at him. He's still giggling. Giggle you, time. Is that a true story? Yeah, we had That's giggle time. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it's, that. You know, it's awkward stuff. <laughs> uh, by the by, David will be hosting a new podcast every Monday called, called Giggle, giggle Time. time. <laughs> David Griffin. Everything Little about bubbles. the. <laughs> wait, I love, by the way, that lead in because I was like, wait, your teacher was talking to you guys about 69. And then, what? No, <laughs> I no. you were going to say. You're like, back in sex ed and they taught it 69. <laughs> Western New York's got some weird. We're very things. progressive in Western New York. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very progressive. Sorry. Okay. Let's talk, talk Game of Thrones. It. So, guys, uh, Wait, go. Cody, you want to throw up that spoiler alert for us? There we go. There Boom. he goes. Boom. Uh, guys, <laughs> last night's Game of Thrones was awesome, yep. first of all. 69 minutes for a finale. <laughs> <laughs> You're the fucking worst. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but with all the promos and like the post mos as I call them, we're only getting like 47 minutes of Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Like 51 mm -hmm. sometimes, maybe. So the fact that we're basically getting... 20 more minutes of episode, I think, means that we're gonna we're finally getting that war, and the war is gonna be for Winterfell, right? And yeah. it better end up with friggin' Roos Bol or Bolton Ramsey Bolton's head on a spike, basically. Also, too, the Blackfish's costuming is incredible. I want ah. that. He's he's wearing fish scales. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of last night's episode? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I really I think we all wanted to see Brienne kiss Jamie there and that scene oh it's like God. kiss him kiss him this is my kiss him. one of my favorite parts of this new season is how she is the sex symbol she's the, cleaning up like Braun wants to get it Jamie just wants all up in that that brand and Pod's quiet mess. but I think he might want it too Pod Pod, Pod we know he's Pod's a nice kid he's penis. a good kid yeah and yeah. of course you know Torment, which I'm still hoping that'll happen yeah. they gotta happen the capital one guy oh yeah but yeah I love that well we know next week some you know titles called battle of the bastards yeah. so I mean it's it's coming we're getting extended episodes next week's gonna be longer than the finale is even even longer than that that's why I always cry when people talking about like slow episodes and it took a while to get going I'm like we only have 10 episodes it's it's almost done we're almost done people I know I mean I think I think they've done such a good job this season building the tension so I mean it's titillating some might say Ooh. you know going with that whole giggle 69 time. thing yeah giggle time um, <laughs> some giggle time, no i mean I, th I think this has been the strongest season yet in terms of just consistency Absolutely. and the to end with winds of winter which is the next book that all the bookers are hoping to yeah. get I, I hope to read it sometime soon uh i think it's a great title for the finale too. Yeah. spr did when khaleesi came out right when she walked into the room yeah. 
Did you scream a little bit? I didn't Did scream a little, a little bit. I was super stoked. I, yeah. The thing is, is for me, I mean, there's so much about it. Everything you guys are saying, like this is the best season. I don't know if that's because now they have so much more freedom. Like they're not adhering to book stuff. So they're just like, okay, we're going to mm -hmm. go the road that we know George R. R. Martin wants us to go along, but we can do it in our own way. But oh my God, the Aria stuff, I was just like, yes, yes, yes. I don't care that her guts probably would have been spilling out all over the streets. I just loved it. I thought the fact that like Khaleesi comes back and doesn't just like walk in I wanted to see those ships on fire. I wanted to see the dragon light those ships Well, up. but you knew we that was happening. We saw him flying. He was yeah. flying over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the yeah. whole thing, and of course, this is the same director who's doing the last two episodes mm -hmm. of the season who gave us Hard Home. Yeah. Hard Home, which was one of the best episodes of the previous season. So I am thrilled beyond belief 69 minutes, <laughs> I, I say yes. Okay, so I will say that, <gasps> what? Oh my God, so as I'm talking, as you're about to start talking and I'm ignoring you, I turned to look at the picture of Cersei behind you. Girl the needs fact a stylist. that it is not going to be a trial by trial combat. Trial by combat? They're gonna get oh. trial by spear in the freaking chest is what's gonna happen. It's gonna be trial by, well, that's the thing. I mean, it's so interesting now because we have these characters who have their best laid plans that are all sort of falling apart. And what you're saying about Ramsey Bolton, I wanna see Sansa be the one who takes him out. Mm -hmm. And now that Arya is going, oh my God, you guys, <laughs> so okay. good, Two she things. has a name. The giggle time between, <laughs> with, with the giggle time with uh, Tyrion, and the Fair. gray worm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell a joke. joke. Tell us tell a joke. joke. Tell us a joke. I can't wait for you to go back to Patrol. We went on Patrol. I can't help but giggle because you you always talk about Patrol. Uh, but also, too, I'm really looking forward to Comic Con because you know there's going to be a booth or a bar that's serving Imps Delight. You know that there's going to be Imps Delight. What about the Starbucks uh, that was in uh, the first floor of my hotel had uh, Game of Thrones themed drinks, lattes, oh, nice. and things like that? So, yeah, I'm sure we're going to see that all what over What did Comic -Con. they have? So, like an espresso was a tier. Yeah, well, like there's a, also like a White Walker mocha or oh, something like oh, that. Walker, so mocha, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I want whatever the Brienne of Tarth is because obviously that's the that's the tall drink that everybody wants. I think it was Brienne of Froth with the. Froth. Oh, I, I know yeah. we're not doing like a full review. There's already a review up on uh, on Collider, but there's just so many nice small moments in last night's episode. I loved uh, Bron and uh, Pod talking. That just that little banter between them. I mean, there's so many. It's, uh, there's the big moments and there's the small moments too. I tweeted out earlier like grabbing balls and buttholes, the, the, <laughs> like the tagline of Westeros, basically, because like right before that, the dude fingers the one dude's butthole, yep. and the, and then the next scene he's grabbing balls. I'm like, this is the best. And we got some penis. We got some hound cock. Yeah. But here's the yeah. one issue. Go. The <laughs> one issue I had with last night's episode. What, Sinead can't handle Houndcock? What that's, happened? That's what Sinead did giggle time, was Houndcock. What, what, what else would you call it? What would you call it, Sinead? Uh, I have no idea. I'm just like listening to all of these, <laughs> all of these new terms and whatnot. Oh, this is great. But Sinead. the one thing that bothered me was I was like, okay, I love everything about this episode, but Padraig, you need to row faster, dog. Yeah. He's just like, mm. bottom, <laughs> bottom. <laughs> Bottom and Brian like turns. It's like the the adventures in babysitting. Look out the window. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Kind of foggy. That. I'm surprised you could see that far. It's a little foggy that morning. Yeah. Love. Love <laughs> goes through all manner do. of uh, natural elements. Sure, it sure does. Yeah. All right, Sinead, What's next? Kevin Besides Smith Hounscock. tugged at some nostalgic heartstrings last week for Mallrats fans when he went on Phil Philadelphia's Preston and Steve morning radio show on WMMR and discussed his plans for the future of cult classic film. The director of the 1995 movie said he and Universal are now nearing agreements to make the sequel a 10-episode TV series. However, there are no details about the casting or on what network the show might air. He did say he still plans to shoot at Exton Square Mall. Sasha, who would you like to see in the Mallrats series? Okay, before we even talk about who's going to be in it, I think we need to talk about where it's going to live. So Universal obviously has the NBC affiliation, but there's no way you're putting a Kevin Smith show no. on NBC and no. having it be what it truly needs to be. You could do it on Hulu. I think Netflix makes a lot of sense. I think uh, Comedy Central or uh, FX. Those yeah. would all be places where I think you can see the show, but you need a show where Kevin well, he's Smith got, can... he's already has his AMC contact, True. too. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I feel like AMC wants it to be so dour. Like, yeah. you need... I think it needs to be... They would give him the dirty but I think mm -hmm. it needs to be a little bit sillier mm -hmm. um, but I love this now we've been talking about the script for a while it's existed for a while and they were calling it mall brats mm. so my fear is that he would do kind of what he did in Tusk and like throw his daughter in and Johnny Depp's daughter in I think the only way you make the show is with the original cast what Jason Lee's busy no the only <laughs> person who might not be able to come ben back Affleck. to fashionable male is Ben Affleck but in general everybody else can come back and I will say when I was on a very short lived 
beloved television show on Food Network, Jeremy London was one of the people that we cooked for. And I was fully like, ha, ah. <laughs> he was Griffin on Party of Five. I named a cat Griffin because I was so in love with him. I want to see Jeremy London on TV. I think that this Wait will be second. so fun, but it has to be the original cast. Which London is Jason London in Days Confused? That's Days and Confused. He's the one who kept his shit together. Jeremy London is the one who's had more personal problems, right. but who was also on Party of Five. Was Jeremy London game. in Out Cold or was that Jason London? I am not the person to ask on, mm, on that. I can one. look London, it up for you. Thanks, Sinead. You're welcome. Huh. Crushing it. Here's, here's my thing. I am a huge Mallrats fan. Love that movie. It's by far my favorite Kevin, Space, uh, Kevin Smith movie, 100%. Um, and I would Jason love- Jason London. Jason London. Thank you, Sinead. Mm. Um, I loved I love that movie so much. I really think an updated version of Mallrats with a new cast is the direction that they should go. What? I do agree that- I, but you need the youth of it. Old people at a mall, what are they? They're mall walkers. You either go from teenager to mall walker. There's no in-between age hanging at a mall, right? You either like kind of, you know, you either work at the mall and although mall brats, that would be a fun little mall kiosk, like bratwurst. Bratwurst? Yeah. Oh, mall good. Maybe that's what it that. is. And I was just misunderstanding that they were the children of the uh, <laughs> people who are already on the show. Like it was Shannon right. Doherty's daughter. Right. So you have that like teenage years where... You, like you know 16 to 20 I think would be an awesome show because then it would be like almost like in betweeners you could be a little more dirty you could swear you could talk like a teenager and you could do the stuff that people do at mall nowadays because back in 95 people still hung out at malls malls aren't like a cool place to hang out anymore are they I'm, no they're I'm still 30. there we go down to the, the Burbank mall over here I still there, there's kids that are okay. in high school that are still hanging out there with their <laughs> backpacks and just hanging. <laughs> I, like, I mean I'm not like I mean I'm not like creeping <laughs> over. I mean I'm going there to get some things you got a target over there and you know some nice I'm not like creeping or there's anything there's a but. Cinnabon over there it's Fantastic. There's a Cinnabon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, giggle time happening oh, over here. The oh, Burbank, no. David the Burbank dark. Mall is always like <laughs> oh, super I empty, like yeah. and it's like really depressing. No, in there. it is the most depressing mall in the world. See, but I was thinking, like, what sponsor if they all TV had... talk at the Burbank Mall. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking they could all have jobs. You there. want to like, find David? They're all they managing. The Burbank mall. <laughs> they're managing like the fashionable meal now. Like they took yeah. it over. Or maybe, maybe the reality show, like the dating show, has a spinoff, but they run it out of the mall. I don't know. What do you think, David? I would watch. The show that you you two are proposing that sounds interesting because I'm not really I don't know the Kevin Smith uh, train it's just not something that really excites me like I've never been really into his films never gotten excited okay. by anything he's ever done I don't dislike the guy it's just not something I get excited about I've seen Clerks the first one one time I saw Jane Silent Bob once I've seen an episode of Comic Book Men but I don't get excited about his projects so mm -hmm. I can't say I'm pumped for this but of course I will I would check it out I'm mm -hmm. curious but I'm not I can't say I'm excited or passionate about yeah. it yeah Shade what do you think you seem like a kind of girl that hung out in the mall breaking dudes hearts wow. by the arcade. Um, I did hang out in the mall, actually. I was like the queen of loitering at yeah. the mall. Um, <laughs> I knew but it. I, I also, that. Don't I also grew up in like Bumblefuck, Illinois, and that's the only thing you do on the weekends, right. go to the movies and go to the mall. Right. So we used to like get kicked out of the mall for loitering all the time. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I don't know. Would you like to see the Mallrats TV series? Is that something that would yeah. interest you? Okay. Yeah, I think there's enough. I think there's enough story there. I think, yeah, totally. Okay, what about this? What if Jay and Silent Bob now have like a medical marijuana shop mm -hmm. and they're running it out in of the, the mall? mall? Yeah, it's gonna be legal by the time this show ever makes it to air. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think. I That's think pretty, it, yeah. that would be. Kind and it of could be disguised as like a Cinnabon or on Annie's, like yeah. with the pretzels, you know, oh and they could God. like hide the weed in. The pastry. Nice. Honestly, I feel like they should just hire us to write the show yeah. because we're yeah. having all kinds of great ideas. And I will say, back in the day when Stole. I used to cocktail, Jason Mewes used to come to the bar where I worked all the time and he would just follow me around going, sexy, where you going? <laughs> all right. That's, that's, right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's almost as creepy as David hanging out at the Burbank Mall. <laughs> what? I, is, I just want to go. I'm not creep, but I'm just going to the mall. That is like the stuff of nightmares. Yeah. At least David hanging out at the Burbank Mall gives me a good chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, I will say that uh, our mall, we had this this arcade for a while. It's no longer there. It was called The Tilt, right? And when I saw Mall Rats, I was like, this is The Tilt. Like, you used to hang outside The Tilt. That's where our drug dealer sold everybody drugs, outside The Tilt. And there was this thing called The Brawl for the Mall, which I think would be an incredible storyline in a Mall Rats episode. Brawl for the Mall, won by a very, very famous actor today from Pittsburgh. Huge actor right Michael now. Michael Keaton won no. The Brawl for the Mall? No. You, if you think about it, you'll get there. But this dude won The Brawl for the Mall. Wait, what happened in The Brawl for the Mall? So there's three neighboring towns that fight for this mall. There's Bethel Park, Upper St. Clair, and Mount Lebanon, and the dude from Mount Lebanon won The Brawl Wait, for the Mall. Wait, but how do you win? This is the saddest it's thing a I've fight. ever heard. You fought, they fought. It was like, it was like and then it was, what? You fake own them all. You own the tilt. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> it's a gang it was like war. an actual fight, like a yes. fist fight. It was like uh, um, 
uh, what's it called? Um, you know, in uh, Anchorman, when it's like Spanish news is oh, here, wow. it was just like break through a trident and somebody it was basically what happened. Shade, can you do me a favor? Can you Google famous actors from Pittsburgh so we can figure out who it is? I can't Absolutely. say his name because I know him and he's a great dude. All right. Uh, Sinead, what's number three on the list here? According to Deadline, Amazon ordered three new pilots last week, which would all appear to be quite buzzworthy. First, Carnival Row from Guillermo del Toro, based on an 11-year-old spec script called A Killing on Carnival Row. It takes place in the version of the future that looks like 18th century London and is filled with people and a bunch of wacky c creatures who must contend with a serial killer. On the other side of the spectrum is Gilmore Girls' Amy Sherman Palladino's The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, about a 1950s housewife who becomes one of the first lady stand-up comedians. Finally, the streaming service picked up Micah Fitzerman Blue's The Legend of Master Legend, a half-hour show based on real-life superheroes Master Legend and the, and the ace, his sidekick. David, which of these shows interests you the most? I think this is obvious. <laughs> Should be obvious which one I would go for. It's definitely going to be Carnival Row. Yeah. Uh, not 18th just because 18th century London. 18th century. <laughs> 1870, 18th century London, yep. in the set in the future. That I'm sold right there. Plus Guillermo del Toro's behind it. I love Amazon pilot season. They just drop like you know four or five new shows you can just sample from. There was one that came out a while ago called uh, Casanova with Diego Luna. Uh, I only saw the first episode. I don't know if it ever got picked up, but it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and they they put them out there. You, you can vote on them. Uh, put how many stars. You can comment. They take that information. They decide which ones are going to make a series out of. So for me, once Amazon drops it's like this Tinder pilot, for TV. it is. Yeah. Once I see this, I'm definitely gonna check out the Guillermo del Toro one right away. Yeah. I just love the premise, uh, or at least what, I guess, I've never heard of the book or anything, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, SPR. One hundred percent. I mean, that mm -hmm. sounds awesome. Everything about it—the pedigree, really? the concept—I think it sounds so cool. If I were to pick a secondary one, I think the one about one of the first female stand-up comedians could mm -hmm. be really, really interesting, especially in that nineteen fifties world because you're dealing with so many gender politics, and then you're going to start getting into like, you know, like Korean War stuff and then Vietnam War stuff. The thing that I think sounds the least interesting is like the random superheroes, and I don't know the showrunner, and I don't know anything involved in it, and I'm just like, oh. But that's it, a half it, hour it, could it, be a com it, like a comedy about could, superheroes. Yeah. Is always funny to me. But it just kind of worries me because everybody's doing superheroes. Feels yeah. like Amazon might yeah. just be like, hey, let me do a superhero show. Let's mm -hmm. get one out there. Totally. Wait, what about you? Because I'm going to go. I, well, you know, I like Guillermo del Toro, I guess. I, I, I'm one of the few people I know uh, that David does. I watch The Strain. I don't even know if it's good. I just keep watching it. It's like you and Contain. No, I got out. You got out of I watched, The Strain. I, yeah, I watched two entire seasons of that show. So me and, and I you ran away. Faster. It just said like I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get the show. Yeah, it's it's a weird show. I mean, I don't know if I like it. Again, it's sort of like I keep watching it because I want to know like it's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Strange is coming out. Yeah. In the summer. yeah. I, I love Corey Stoll. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's a great well, actor. I mean, he's, he's great. My Everything. Yeah. But, so wait, which one would you say? I'm then? definitely the the uh, stand up, the first female stand up. Oh, cool. Um, because it's one thing. Like, here's the thing. Lady Dynamite on Netflix is incredible. That's that. It's so good. It, Maria Bamford is on a different level of thinking and a different level of comedy if you guys I'm gonna say two words that are very inappropriate but there's a commercial for a product called pussy noodle and it's, <laughs> giggle time and it's it's so, I'm never I was like laughing out loud on a in, a in an uber watching anyway uh lady lady dynamite and it hits on different aspects of females in stand-up and I don't think many shows have done the female stand-up well at all if mm. any and to, to show like the early part of comedy because women had to struggle so I mean here's the thing and it's it's one of the most offensive things you can say to anybody it's like oh she's funny for a girl to a stand-up comedian it's it's bonkers because you're either funny or you're not in my mind right because there's a lot of funny male stand-ups that there are a lot of not so funny male stand-ups that get jokes because they're they're men and it, anyway it's just the nature of the thing and so to put it in the 60s they'll do something like better than they did with agent carter which i thought was just way too much like oh she's a dame she can't be a spy <laughs> right so like i don't know i would want like nine different accents on that but <laughs> The, doing female stand-up, it's going to hit on those things like I Love Lucy and like the struggle she had to get to one, the funniest show of all time, right? You had There's the struggle not only of being a female in the world, but being a female in a business where people don't instinctively want to laugh at you. I think that that's, it's a brilliant premise, and I, and I really hope the show does well. I agree. I'm with yeah. you. But I love that you brought up Pussy Noodle because it's actually brought to you by the same people who make Houndcock. <laughs> 
<laughs> cut to David. Cut, cut to David. No, it was just a, my, my 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 mom watches the show. I'm just I, I can't. We oh are goodness. so sorry, oh, Mrs. Oh, Griffin. Mrs. Griffin. <laughs> we apologize from the bottom oh, of my, my heart. Goodness. Hashtag sorry, Mrs. Griffin. Oh, oh man. man, this oh, show's man. the best. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna go into superhero <laughs> rundown. This is the point in the show when we talk about all the goings on in superhero television. The lovely Sinead DeFries. What is first? While the superheroes take some much needed R&R, we've got some casting news to report. Season three of The Flash will introduce a major recurring character of Barry, slightly older, slightly geekier contemporary, a guy who is as smart as he is intuitive. As such, this newcomer doesn't buy Barry's nice guy routine and sets out to learn what he's hiding all while concealing some secrets of his own. David, who is this guy? Well, there's a few theories out there of who this person could be. Somebody who's uh, intellectually as smart as Barry. Uh, they're keeping this kind of hush-hush right now. I just want to go through a few of them. Uh, one of them is uh, called The Folded Man, uh, Edwin uh, Goss. We have another one called Kurt Engstrom, The Alchemist. Ooh. Or even another one called Alexander Petrov, uh, Mr. Element. Mm. So um, some interesting characters. I, I like that right. It's Petrov. No, Mr. Alexander yeah. Petrov was the name of uh, uh, Baryshnikov's character on Sex and the City. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, maybe he was a villain. Oh, he was actually. Yeah. He was awful. Um, so uh, it could go a lot of different ways. I mean, Barry's messed a lot of things up. Looks like we might be going in the Flashpoint uh, Paradox storyline, mm -hmm. which would be awesome. Uh, Barry says he needs some time off when he's talking to Iris at the end of the season. Yeah. And he's like, I need some time off. I got to find myself. I'm not ready. And then he goes off and changes the past. Right. Huh. Like an idiot. Because well, he knows so that that causes, has consequences, but he did it anyway. So here was what I was thinking, not knowing. Oh, wait. It wasn't Petrov. It was Petrovsky. Whatever. Oh. Well, close enough. Close enough. So, um, no, here's what I was thinking looking at that still. What if it's actually another version of himself? Is that possible? Well, well the Barry on Earth 2 was like, he looked like an 18th century London professor. That's true, yeah. Could uh, it be him? But, but, but they teamed up at the end. So yeah. but the thing is, now that he's messed up the timeline, it's possible. The thing is, a lot of, another rumor too is that people are thinking that this is the way that Supergirl's going to uh, enter the fray. Because right now, she's in a different Earth. Yeah that Barry uh, went to at one point. So I don't think they're gonna keep her on a different Earth and just have her cross over to you know our Earth and mm -hmm. hang out with Arrow and them. I think they're gonna find a way to combine them. Smart. Yeah. I mean, you got it. You, they're. All, I mean, they already talked about the four episode crossover Very complicated. with. Very complicated. Super, it is. It is getting. It is really. It, it's like Game of Thrones. Like after episodes of The Flash and, and with the Earth Two and Earth Three, I need to like. I need a map. I need like a it's time Game of Thrones line. with time travel. You imagine you had time travel on top of Game of Thrones. We oh, do. Oh, we oh that's right. We do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we do. That's right. Forget Hold the door, David. Hold, Hold the door. Hold the door. <laughs> oh. Uh, um, I think. <laughs> I, listen, I, I like the Flash a lot, and I but I couldn't stand the finale. So I'm hoping that this dude, like, I, I'm i really hoping that Barry Allen, like, gets his due. Because he was, a, like, a whiny little dick kind of. I agree. His move season. was stupid, but yeah. this is going to open the door for some great storytelling. Yeah. Now, they can't do it so, Sasha, just to give you guys a reference. So in the comics, they're not going to go this far. But in the Flashpoint Paradox, Thomas Wayne is Batman. Uh, Bruce is the one who's killed. Mm. And uh, Thomas Wayne's wife... Uh, Martha. Obviously. Martha. Why did you, you say that name? name? Why did you, you say that name? name? Martha becomes a Joker. What? That's not a spoiler because they're not going to show That's it. We're not going to cool. get Thomas Wayne or that anything. Cool. But That's it's, some shit I would watch. It's, it's yeah. an awesome story. If, if they could get all those characters together and actually do that storyline right, <sighs> woo, be, cool. be some good television. That'd be cool. Yeah, well, but, speaking of Gotham, Sinead, oh, what's next? Segue. In more casting news, Fox's Gotham will introduce Vicki Vale for season three. The long-running DC Comics character created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger has been around since 1948 and has long been a romantic interest for Bruce Wayne or Batman. Josh, will Vicki Vale's introduction get you to watch Gotham? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't watch Gotham, but I loved that picture of Kim Basinger oh, and Michael yeah. Keaton. Okay, family story. My dad loved Vicki Vale. Has no idea that Kim Basinger is the actress. Anytime he'd see her in something, like, oh, Vicki Vale's in this movie. We got to go see it. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I might binge Gotham. It's been one of those things that's like on my burner that I definitely because Batman is my hands down favorite superhero. I love him, um, and so. The fact that I don't watch Gotham is always kind of like chewed at me, and it's mostly because I don't like Ben McKenzie. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, I, I like Southland in spite of Ben McKenzie. And what about I, the OC? How do you I, feel well, about I the OC? Well, I love the OC, and again, in spite of Ben McKenzie, because I was. What do you so, have against Ben McKenzie? I don't know. He just like he, he just 
I'm nothing against the guy. I, I have a personal story of why I don't like him, but like as an actor, he just oh, is kind of playing for me. Yeah. And I, if when they did the casting for Gotham, I was like, really, Ben McKenzie in Gotham? Like, give me somebody else. Like, I would have even. I don't know who would I want. I would want to see in that role, but I don't want Ben mm. McKenzie murking up my Gotham waters. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I do love Vicky Vale, and so this is like putting me. It's pushing me closer and closer to the edge of okay, Gotham. Okay. Well, know, here's the thing. Who would you want? Because it's probably not going to be Kim Basinger. Yeah. Who would you want to play Vicky Vale? Oh, young Kim Basinger. Young Kim Basinger, man. Doesn't I have loved, to be. I know. I loved the girl that plays Grace on Peaky Blinders. What is oh, that yeah, actress's she's name? Yeah. She See, is, I was yeah. actually going to like a similar place with Vicky Vale because I went Kim Basinger, Alec Baldwin, Baldwin family. Haley Baldwin, who actually is she kind an of, actress? I don't think so, but mm. she's yeah. she's really pretty and mm. she looks a lot like Kim Basinger back in the day. Totally yeah. interesting. That could be interesting, yeah. just because yeah, that is it's Kim Basinger. David Griffin. I, I, I wanted to love Gotham. I did. I tried to give the first season a go. I know some people said the, the was it the rise of the villains for season two. I said David, try it. Get back into it. I tried. Um, the kid who was playing the Joker, the early version of the Joker, uh, uh, the guy from kid from Shameless, mm. uh, was really I like him as an actor. Yeah. I just can't get into it for some reason. It's right. not for me, even though I love that they're exploring all these villains. I mean, yeah. Penguin and, um, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who I'd, I'd it, pick in that Is it role. Ben McKenzie? Is that why you can't get into it? No, I actually respect, he's got, uh, he's got Bakker in a, a pregnant, so I, I respect him. It's true. Yeah. Good. I, I, I respect him. Killing it. Yeah. All right, Shane, what's fun? <laughs> all right, finally in more casting news, Supergirl will introduce two series regulars, Lena Luther and Nick Farrow. Lena is the sister of Lex Luther, leaving Metropolis for a national city to get out from under the shadow of her brother as TV line reports. Her age range for casting is listed as 25 to 35, and she's listed as sexy, smart, and determined. Pharaoh, meanwhile, is a new leading man type and the son of a famous reporter who joins Catco. In Hanging Out with Kara, the hero and Nick might finally come out, reads the official description, but no one named Pharaoh exists at DC Comics. Sasha, does this casting sound a little too CW? What do you mean? She's sexy, but smart. she doesn't know it. Yeah, and he's smart. sexy, but he's got a, like an inner hero and it just has to burst out of his perfectly shaped chest. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I like it. And quite honestly, I think Lena Luthor sounds like a character that I would be super into. I love that they're like 25 to 35. Yeah, right. It's CW. She's going to be 22. Yeah. Promise. <laughs> but I think that that sounds fun. And I like that they're trying to like reinvigorate this franchise with new characters, new ideas. They're going to Berlanti it up. I This gives me hope that they're recognizing what the show still needs, which is some fresh faces, some different storylines, not to adhere so closely to, I think, what they thought the audience wanted, which wasn't necessarily what the audience really mm. like got into. And I think that this is smart. And also, I'm hoping that it creates some like romantic stuff with Nick and Jimmy and like all that stuff. I mean, not that they would hook up, but you know... <laughs> Any, I'll just throw it to you now. Just because like, <laughs> just I made it, yeah, I, I, I took it to her. I will say that uh, I know that a lot of times in the rundowns I have typos, but that wasn't a typo. That was a joke, Sinead, and you botched it. What was what? the joke? And finally, in casting news, because that's all we've been talking about is casting. I know, I tried to change it. Ew. I was like, in more casting news. I know, because, never mind, whatever. I Line love. readings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, First of all, Lena Luther sounds a ton like what they did in like it's like a Smallville name, basically. Like every one of the Luthers is an L. Like that family in my town, every kid name was well. They did a comic was like you know Peter Parker, yeah. Lena, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I think you know they are gonna young up this Supergirl, which is fine with me because the Supergirl that they're doing now doesn't really interest me. So if they put like young hot people CW style in Supergirl and put them on wherever what Earth, you're gonna sell. You're gonna get more people to watch the show. It's smart. Lena Luther. I'm hoping you know she's as hot as Lana Lang was in Smallville. My goodness. What? <laughs> David, go <laughs> take it. Yeah, David's I'm envisioning <laughs> Lena Luther. <laughs> uh, I, I hope this is a good move. It's funny that the Supergirl they always have to have like everything's just made. <clears throat> Female, like every villain's turned into a female, which is fine. I mean, it's good. You know, I want it's great to see a lot of female characters in this show. Um, I do hope they change their style a little bit from what it was on CBS. You know, I mean, kind of flesh it out to where it's more like Arrow and Flash. You know, I, I wish the CW would expand their range a little bit. I think they need to realize that us, like we watch it, like it's not just young teens. I mean, a lot of people watch the CW from all age ranges. You know, I think they need. I know they have a certain demographic they're going for, but I think they can branch out and try to just have a little different tone. It doesn't have to be like cute and smart and sexy. None of the men. When I was growing up, I always assumed guys on TV that no one had chest hair. I thought I was like the one guy in the world who had chest hair. I'm like, wow, no one must have chest hair. 
I don't know how these guys, they're all just clean shaven. That everywhere. actually bugged uh. the hell out of me because my husband dragged me into watching, my husband dragged me into watching The Bachelorette this week and mm -hmm. all the guys, I was like, why do none of you have body hair? It's weird. It's I, I assume weird. guys just didn't have, like, well, maybe just most men don't have chest hair. Maybe I I'm mean, one of if, the few who does. The cool guys, on show the us your back. No, I'm not showing you my back. I mean, everybody knows that I got a lot of dirt. And I, got, I mean, I have a sweater vest on at all times, let's be honest. You're warm. So I'm, I'm, I'm a constantly warm guy. Uh, I will say that that does upset me all the time because, like, actor... Ben, okay, I had to shave my chest for swimming growing up, right? So obviously it came in thicker every time. It's not an urban legend. It happens, and it happens <laughs> bad. It's it's a, But if I was on, like, The Bachelor... It, and I had my shirt off and like they're doing like the hot tub scene with that dude who's like straight. That guy's really gay in the measurette. Um, and they they were like, they're, they, they, I'm guaranteeing you that all the dudes like they'd be confession and be like, Josh is like a really nice guy, but man, he has got a lot of hair on his body. Like they do the one on one date where I go in the hot tub with the girl and she just like, oh, yeah, definitely. no, you'd be off by be episode two. First, episode yeah. two, as soon as it's like take your shirt off, yeah. they'd just be like, oh, you can't stay because no. it's just it's too much of a liability with like the shower drains. Exactly. And stuff. Yeah. One hundred percent. It is. Uh, it's 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 blatant chest hairism. Is that like a, a term? I, sure. It is now. Yeah. Brought to you it. by the people yeah. who make David pussy and I. Noodle. It's a struggle every day. It's like mowing a lawn. You just got to keep it somewhat, whatever. Do you it's brush like, it? No. <laughs> I Do you braid it? <laughs> Can I braid it? <laughs> Let me braid it. French braid. Oh my god, cornrows. All I can do a pretty move. sick fish tail. <laughs> a fish tail, Chester. I, oh, I will say I that for that. Halloween one year, I didn't wear a shirt and I just shaved the Batman logo into my chest hair, and I was chest hair Batman. Wow. So that's there awesome. You go. I love that the boys are complaining about their body hair right now. <laughs> Sinead, would you like to tell us any stories? <laughs> no, no thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good. Fish tail. Oh, uh, all right. Talk about highs and lows. Let's go into some highs and lows, uh, guys. The time of the week where we pick our favorite moments and our least favorite moments. Uh, some of our, some fans have been sending out some lows and some highs for the week. So send those in. We'll throw them up and, you know, we'll give you a little bit of fan credit for, because we don't necessarily get to watch everything. So the fact that you guys are sending us highs and lows, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, hashtag a clatter TV talk. Let's go into some uh, some highs. I was going to put this in the news. A lot of this kind of came out. JB Smooth saying that Curb Your Enthusiasm Season 8 is a possibility, which gets us super excited. Uh, National Lampoon, uh, that documentary they made, they're going to turn it into a TV series. Uh, the Stranger Things trailer on Netflix. Did you guys watch that trailer? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I know this. I'm pumping my hometown, but the Pittsburgh Pirates, their head of graphics for their Jumbotron, did a Game of Thrones intro for the players for the for the Jumbotron. They like That's did a cool. different theme song, and they like made Pittsburgh. Look, oh man, it's like the coolest thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, the OJ documentary premiere was awesome, and Britt Roberts cast in Girl Boss, and I happen to know the woman that she is uh, going to portray on screen. Cool. So yeah. Um, I would like to start with Kirby Enthusiasm season eight because we have never talked about Curb on this show. Really, like we've like yeah. maybe touched on it. Well, because how are you gonna talk about it? It's not on the it's air right now. It's not on the air. Um, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. Obviously, Seinfeld is my favorite show of all time. I know you hate it. And I know you don't like Curb Your Enthusiasm because you say it's blackface for Jewish people, which I don't, I don't know how I understand that. Like if you want to explain it a little further, that go ahead. Uh, so Curb is less of a problem for me than Seinfeld. Okay. Seinfeld is straight up blackface for Jews. So I grew up in New York and I am Jewish and it feels like every horrendous stereotype that I wouldn't want sort of, you know, spewed out to 40 million people a week. It feels like that. And it's that really whiny, oh boy, vey, this is the world. My gefilte fish. I'm just like, fuck, come on. You I gotta see fuck. the baby. No, the, that was the whole episode about like the hollow. Was it the rye bread? It was the rye it's the marble bread. Rye. The, the marble, marble rye. rye. You didn't get the right marble rye. It's that just, it. <laughs> if you You're ever met. so good at that. If know, you ever so met good. my Aunt Ronnie, oh, Aunt Ronnie and cousin Holly, you would just, you would understand. So for me, I can't watch it. It's too much. Ay. <laughs> David. Griffin. I, awesome. I saw Larry David at uh, the driving range a few months ago, and I was like, I walked by, and I was like, when are we getting more curb? And he looked at me, he was like, bah. And that's all he said. And I was like, <laughs> it's, it's, made not a no. it's not a no. It's not a no. So uh, what do you think, DG? About Curb season eight. Oh, oh yeah, I'm excited. I love yeah. Curb. Yeah, it's such a great show. I mean, it's George. Yeah, it's, he is George. He you is get George. George. I mean, you have a man, Larry David. Uh, he and Seinfeld. For those you don't know, Seinfeld made so much money. Um, Larry David and uh, Jerry Seinfeld split 1.7 billion dollars. 
uh, that they get paid off, I think over a 10 year period. So the curve basically takes place with Larry David getting all this money and having nothing to do. It's a harass his neighbors like Ted Danson and other people. So Marty that's what, yeah. So I mean, that's why the show, so that's also why yeah. you don't see Seinfeld doing everything because he can pick and choose and do whatever he wants because he has yeah. so much money. Um, but it's such a great show. I, I love George from Seinfeld, my favorite character. So I love Larry David. Absolutely. Well, the thing that's interesting, I will say about Larry David is the reason that it's taken so long to get this is uh, Larry David hated the process of writing Seinfeld. He hated having mm. a board. He hated having to fill the board. And he said he would never again do a show unless he had the entire season written in advance. So that's why they've always been slow to do it. Mm -hmm. The fact that he actually felt inspired enough to write something and then ha like bring all the people together, I think that's cool. But I will say, Josh, bone to pick. Mm. My highlight is not on this list. Unreal? Unreal, you guys. Unreal is this show on Lifetime. And I promise you, if you don't think you like Lifetime, this show will make you like Lifetime. It is about- It's a shame, no offense to Lifetime, but it oh. is almost like a shame that it is on Lifetime because less, not enough people are watching it. Totally, and it comes with the stigma of like, it's television yeah. for women. Now I will say the <clears> show is about the behind the scenes making of a show that is like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Do not turn away yet. This season <laughs> starts with the two main characters played by Sherry Appleby and Constance Zimmer brilliantly getting wrist tattoos that if I ever need a tattoo, this will be what it is. It said money, dick, power. Come on, that is not your typical Lifetime show. One of the lines that Constance Zimmer says in the beginning is the more white pussy on this show, the better. That's not your typical Lifetime. Again, I'm sorry, really Mrs. sorry, Griffin. Mrs. Griffin. Like oh, we apologize, man. Mrs. Griffin. Oh, no, it's hard not to watch this but I bet you, I bet you, you know what your mom's doing right now? She's at home watching this and being like, I do. I love Unreal. Unreal is the best. The show is so addictive. I binge season one in like two days. Yeah, I would stay I, up I until three days. in the morning watching, it, and it's only 10 episodes. My biggest issue with the show is that I cannot binge season two. Yeah, you're waiting. It's same, yeah, same for you. I'm fantastic. on episode five right now, and I, I am liking it. I was surprised. Yeah. I do like it. It's interesting to see all the, I don't watch The Bachelor The Bachelorette, but now that after seeing this, I want to watch it now. I want to uh, watch The Bachelor. Because you get the I behind know, the scenes. You're, yeah. you're really, yeah. Sinead's really on the fence about it. I am. <gasps> I'm just, I am on, I've watched uh, the first two episodes. <clears throat> I will continue to watch it, because there's enough for me to continue to watch it. But right now, the boss lady is so obnoxious to me and uh, it's it's really mm. her heavy like it's just i don't know if they're setting up her character which is fine because i get that a show has to do that in the beginning and i'm only in season one she redeems herself hardcore okay because so. i i believe that she's a good actress i i can see maybe her character coming through but right now it just is so much about her and i feel like her voice is a lot to handle. Mm, okay. Interesting. Mm. Well, what about Craig Bierko too? Because Craig Bierko is so great on the show. Who does he play? He's the Mike Fleiss character. Oh, okay, got and it. And he's got it. genius. Yeah. Also, it's Britt Robertson. Britt Robertson. Wasn't that what I said? Wait, she's Brit in a, um, Secret know. Circle, the CW show. Now she's yeah. in Tomorrowland. And now she's that blown. was she's a show now. that was yeah. canceled with yeah. like Longest three episodes ride. left yeah. of yeah. the season. It was depressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she won they that. They were witches. She, yeah, it was good. She was up against. She she was up for that like People's Choice Award for longest ride. She's blown up. Yeah, and yeah. she was in Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland too. Which I was, love that you just I love looked her. at me like, oh, remember that People's Choice Award? <laughs> uh, I was there. That's the only reason. I, I will say though, the longest ride, Scott Eastwood. Whoop, whoop, that's that's my buddy. With that. That's my buddy. Is, that, is he related yeah, to Clint Eastwood? Good buddy. You should probably bring him on the show because I feel like we need to Are talk to him about things. Are you kidding me right no, now? No, we were. Hey. Out. You're married. Oh. Bring him on the show. <laughs> I feel like we he should interview would him. Love you. Oh, um, um, anyway, uh, wait. I want to talk about. Let's talk about the OJ documentary. What oh, is Clint Eastwood's son? Yeah, I'll oh, share. Wow. Scott Eastwood. Oh. Scott Eastwood um, doesn't love me. The <laughs> you're married. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> He'd love the both of you. Hey, let's stop talking about Scott, Scott Eastwood. Scott Eastwood, please come okay. on the wait, show. Wait, are we going to lows or are we still on highs? We're still on no, highs. No, we're, we're I just, I just wanted to, like the longest episode of yeah. TV well, ever. I mean, we're supposed to, this is supposed to be like the quick ones. I just yeah. want to say that uh, the OJ documentary, please watch yeah. it. If you think you're burnt out on OJ because of the FX series, this is so informative, so good. I watched it with my roommate who's a different demographic than me. She's white. Um, and from a girl. London. And no, she's not from London, but she really enjoyed it too. You know, I think it, it, it speaks to race and Southern California. It's a history lesson. It's not yeah. just about football and OJ. It's about Southern California and blacks moving from the South, moving to California in search of a new life. And they actually found out that it, it's Boy. just as racist yeah. in California as it is in Georgia at that time in the 60s. It's really, it's really worth checking out. What, really good. Uh, ABC, the first episode, uh -huh. and the rest are going to air on for, ESPN. More on yeah. ESPN. It's yeah. So they for only, they yeah. only aired the pilot on ABC. They only aired the first. It's a yeah, five. Yeah, they're going to replay it on ESPN though. Again, yeah, so you can watch it again. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is. It, it just. It. I, I can't wait. I, I, like I said before we started filming, you could do like a forty-part thing on OJ, and I would watch every part of it because this whole thing 
is so interesting to me that this man got off, got mm -hmm. away with murder based solely on whatever the whatever the case may be. I'm super pumped about this documentary. Mm -hmm. I've got it. I've got it saved. Um, go and watch the Stranger Things trailer on Netflix. It's no, awesome. Switching. I saw it. It looks like e. Winona Ryder. Man, Give they aged up. the Winona Ryder. She looks. Quick. I think it looks so good. I yeah. can't wait. I think it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the Stranger Things trailer, and I'm loving that they're going to bring National Lampoon to TV. Now, listen, for those people, like National Lampoon back in the day was the mecca for funny, right? I mean, they did. Conan was a writer on it. It was, you know, the Harvard Lampoon started this whole thing. You don't realize, like, National Lampoon made Animal House. Yeah. Uh, all the vacations, those are all National Lampoon stuff. That's a franchise that really, like, launched a ton of huge careers. And the fact that they're going to do a series based on the documentary, which the documentary was incredible, um, really gets me excited because comedy back then was just as like drug fueled as any industry. And people kind of like, oh, comedians weren't rock stars, whatever. There are some stories from the comedy store improv days of the amount of drugs those dudes did would kill, you know, small animals. And they're gonna they're they're not gonna pull like hold any punches for this TV series. That get that I mean I love the comedy world, so that gets me excited. What about what about you, Dave? Uh I I don't know. Like I said for me the OJ stuck out and definitely um uh the sorry, Kirby enthusiasm for me. Yeah, I think yeah. are my top two okay. on this list. All right, let's go into the lows. I'm continuing to watch Feed the Beast, though. Oh, burn. I'm waiting for the third. I'm waiting for the third episode. I give every show a three episode trial. Two episodes in, I might throw my, the plate that they're cooking on out the window. This is not that good. <laughs> uh, the Americans finale. I'm so. Dis I know a lot of people were really high on the season. Americans. I'm so down. I thought the series this this season was. I really heard. Boring. I saw all these like great articles on like Vulture yeah. and all these people saying this is like one of the. I mean, the show's supposed to be considered one of the best shows on television. And plus, the finale people said it's just it's it was, incredible. That's yeah, what I've heard. I'm like, man, it wasn't. It wasn't. Season Go didn't like it. Nah, it didn't do it for me. Oh, two more uh, seasons. Containment two more seasons. that <laughs> that's Sasha's jam right watching. there. <laughs> Best show on CW according to Sasha. Are you really still watching? Okay, so here's what happened, you guys. <laughs> I, I thought, thought this was a joke. No, I thought we were watching it for the show, so I kept watching it for the show. And then I got to like episode seven, and I was like, "You guys, this show sucks." And they were like, "Okay, stop watching. We're not doing it anymore." <laughs> but you can't. But then I was already on episode seven, and I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> so then, yeah, it's like I feel like I like you've come too far. I've come too damn far, and I know that there's only like five more episodes and I hate the show and I hate everybody on it and everyone's so, so, so dumb. And that guy's the perfect example of like why CW? No, not that guy. They're all looking around. The main guy whose picture we just showed, the guy who's the cop, Jake, is like the perfect example of like why the CW, the one in the stupid gray shirt and next to talking to the black dude who's actually good and British. He's such a jerk and he's such a terrible actor and like the, the stupid love story and like now they're trying to make it a conspiracy and there was this terrible episode that was all supposed to be like a horror episode and I wanted to stop. This is like the review of The Good in. Wife. So she's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I would say too, a fan recommended that I watch Power oh. on Stars. Oh, I want to watch oh, that. Oh, Power. Oh, I, 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 I was thinking of uh, Power. Uh, Powers. Powers on PlayStation Network. No, that's, that's not very good. Yeah, it's not good. Um, Power <laughs> on Stars. I, am, I thought I was going to love it. Power is dope, I son. I do not oh, like it. Power is good. What? It's a little too on the nose for me. Like, it is every cliche about drug dealing. You didn't like, like Ghost? Gangster. Ghost is the man. They just need a better story around Ghost. And, and you have You're Professor, a drug you have dealer that owns a club. Look, welcome to the party. And you have Professor Stein on there? Yeah, I'm just, you know, it's okay. It's not the uh, best TV. It's not the best, but I, I, I love Power. Like I, I like it more in Empire and really? it, it's it's good it's juicy it's got the so you ever checked watch out it. I think you like cool. power yeah you know what I also want to watch I'll stick with it then. we need to watch Kingdom well, we are Animal. we're gonna we're gonna. No. Well, we're definitely watching Animal oh, Kingdom. Oh, Kingdom's the, uh, the MMA. Kingdom's the MMA, the MMA yeah. one, which uh, I didn't watch because right. it was a Jonas Brothers show, and I was like, ha, ha, no. and now I actually think I need to give it a I shot. I think a couple no, fans Animal have Kingdom, said, I cannot wait We're going to do a pilot review next week of Animal Kingdom, so tune in for that. Ray Donovan in a couple weeks. Ray Donovan, and we're going to do a pilot review, obviously, of Roadies. Uh, even though it's online right now, you guys can watch the roadies. We're going to wait and actually do the pilot review after everybody has can see it fully on Showtime. Um, another fan recommended I watch this The People's List. It's like a, a weekly show brought to you by People Magazine. It was oh, really bad. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I watched it. Oh, yeah. you did. I don't, Isn't I, that with Jerry O'Connell? It sure is. Man, that guy should not host television. What? Just go back to acting. You're a really good actor. What is it about? They just talk it's, about... It's a People Magazine. You're watching People Magazine. So it's like... Like tabloids? Like celebrity yes. news? Yeah. 
Hmm. Interesting. It wasn't. It wasn't ideal. Speaking for of celebrity brain. news, I just remembered. I texted you last night. You didn't put this in the highlights either. I'm just getting the fuzzy end of the lollipop today. On the Tonys last night, <laughs> when they showed Josh Groban's high school performance of Fiddler on the Roof, didn't see it. That was fantastic. <laughs> Damn. He was introducing the Fiddler on the Roof segment, and they showed him at like 16 doing this terrible. It was actually good. I mean, it's Josh Groban, but it's hilarious because it's like VHS, and you can tell it's home video. It's like really bad quality. That was hilarious. Uh, I was in musicals in uh, Grey's School in High School. Well, you go host the Tonys and we'll no. put up some video of you. I can host that. the Tonys? Give me the freaking Tonys. I'd be sweet at it. <laughs> Don't you think? You'd be I good. think so. Yeah, You'd be right? fantastic. Yeah. If you guys were at Barney's Beanery last night after the Penguins won the Stanley Cup, you would know that I'm pretty freaking good at karaoke. Oh, I believe you. I think you'd be fantastic. And you and Alex Trebek, great host. <laughs> you might a little more away, whatever's in that cup yeah. you got over there. But. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still celebrating, guys. The Penguins won the Stanley Cup. Oh, yeah. right, let's say. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> let's go into streaming spotlight, guys. As we're going to talk quickly about Voltron, and I will say, David is going to finish the season. He is going to lead a review here on Collider Videos. Probably come out next week. Uh, maybe Dennis, maybe Christian, mm -hmm. maybe Mark. Uh, we'll also talk about Voltron, legendary defender. I watched the pilot. Um, I, see, here's the thing. I'm not like a big animated TV guy. I know we interviewed the, the showrunners and everything, but this was it's really well done. It's very well done. Yeah, these this it's and funny. It's funny. The comedy, funny. the action, yeah. it, it's, the, the animation is beautiful to it look is. at. It I, I'm cool. really loving it. I'm not a, really a Voltron fan, but because I love Joaquin Dos Santos and Lauren Montgomery from yeah. uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, I'm sticking with this because I just love the style that they create. And it's mm -hmm. just look at this guy. It's five <laughs> lions coming together to form yes. Voltron. That was the, my the, favorite show when I was a kid. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I even said it before we sat down. We got to form like Voltron. Day? Hell yeah, this okay. show's the oh, shit. Nice. All right, yeah. Voltron was my dog All right, and my cat. <laughs> That's your challenge. That's your homework this week. Got to finish Voltron. Finish Voltron. I can do it. You got it. I nice. believe in me. Yes. Uh, I will say that <laughs> in, in, in the Netflix arena, Orange is the New Black new season is coming out. <laughs> I won't Who's be part of the review. I haven't seen that since season one. Um, a lot of people fell off of that yeah, show. Season Last season was rough. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it was bad. Just get out of jail already. Yeah, oh, I thought no. you only had like an 18 month sentence or something. Or you would have thought, thought that was. I not 18 was, months, was it even a year? Uh, How long? I yeah. thought that was the brilliant part of the show. It was like, oh, it'll be a limited series in prison. And then everybody started liking it. And now they're like, blah, 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 more seasons. The thing is, is it actually could have been great. They just, they added too many characters. They made too many storylines we didn't care about. They just did too much random stuff and it's contained. The idea, the original conceit of like, you see a character, you learn their backstory mm -hmm. and then you see what's going on in their real life. But then they like, I mean, they're wasting some of the best people and they're not going deeper into storylines we actually would care about. And they're bringing in new folk and it's just, mm. it's not well written. So, it's a bummer. Yeah. And I love that show. Yes, you've had to yeah. I did two and a half seasons. A lot but, of boobs, you know. a lot of bush. Uh, all right. <laughs> Pussy noodle. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Griffin. Uh, all right, let's go into some Twitter no. questions, guys. Send us Twitter questions. Yeah. Hashtag it. Collider TV talk all week. You guys, you guys suggest a lot of fun things. Uh, so thank you, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for giving us uh, the ability to talk television. We love doing it. Hashtag Collider TV talk. Sinead, what's first? Sinister underscore Cyrax tweets: Do you guys think a TV show can ever match the worldwide popularity of Game of Thrones? That's a really good question. David was looking up numbers. Yeah, so I was looking up some numbers. So I realized we're talking about worldwide, talking about discussion. Yeah. The water TV cooler. landscapes change because, yeah, we have the water cooler thing. We have all, so many outlets to watch TV. So many people are watching so many different things. Maybe like 18 million watch, you know, Big Bang Theory. People watch 18, maybe 15, 16 million watch Game of Thrones, and they kind of cross a little bit. But back in the day, when oh, there were yeah. just a few shows, look at some of these numbers, especially for finales. You look at MASH, even Roots. That MASH doing, was like 106 yeah, million, and right? Roots, was, Roots at number two was 100 million. I yeah. mean, look at the finale for... Friends, 65 million. Seinfeld, 76 million. Cheers, 93 and a half. And that's yeah. just in the United States alone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. granted, there wasn't as much competition back then. So now Game of Thrones is big, but it wasn't like Cheers big. Yeah, it was certainly wasn't MASH big. I no, mean, not that's MASH crazy. big. Nothing was big as MASH. Well, yeah. when you think about what we've done, basically, is like you said, you've diluted the market. Like there were four networks, and right. that was it, <laughs> and everybody had those options. And now we have hundreds of networks and all of these different streaming services and we do have worldwide content and access to a million different things youtube like, video, people watch youtube you know YouTube, clips and video, videos and freaking vine whatever <laughs> you're gonna do mm -hmm. so it's been there's been so much dilution that i think like the question it's almost like asking like what's the highest grossing movie of all time right. because we could talk about like star wars or we could talk about gone with the wind because if yeah. you actually adjust for inflation it's a right. totally yeah. different conversation yeah 
Yeah. I mean, I think maybe what the question is getting at is like, will will there be a show where we're like discussing it mm. at nauseum, right? And is pushing the needle so far as far as like every consumption. You know what I mean? Like the top 10 podcasts on iTunes the week after Game of Thrones season six aired, eight out of the 10 were Game of Thrones podcasts. Mm -hmm. You know cool. what I mean? It, it does and, lead to discussion on like any other show, yeah. I feel like. I drama, feel like, drama show. I feel like the fandom for the show is so unbelievable. And like we talked about a little bit over the weekend um, about how like there's, because of social media, it, we all hype each other up over things yes. now. So like Game of Thrones fans really hype each other up. You go online and it's like, the first thing you want to do is tweet about the show that you just watched. And as social media and the internet gets more prevalent and relevant mm -hmm. like that is still going to affect shows to come so if there's another show that's just as good and social media is a little bit further along absolutely i think it's possible because that's mm -hmm. why there's so much pop culture hype around it yeah. but there's mm -hmm. also source material like we have to consider the fact that there yeah. were these books so there was right. already like a there was already fan built base, base and then they delivered in such an incredible way yeah. so i mean I, I think there has to be every everything eventually gets mm -hmm. you know overtaken like records only stand for so long and then something else comes along i don't know how long it will be before we see something this good again but i'm sure it will happen what okay so if you were going to rank like your three shows that, that you think were like the most talked about shows let's let's forget numbers okay what do you think were the most talked about shows of their time like i'm definitely going to say breaking bad Right, was like yeah. the most talked about show. Lost, of course. Lost, of okay. course. Lost, yeah, yeah, Lost would have been mine. Lost. Well, so how far back are we going? Are we well, saying like, like last 10 years? Yeah, I, let me, I'll give you last 10 years. Yeah, like the I most would say... talked about game changing kind of show. I mean, Walking Dead kind of had that effect in the beginning yeah. as well. True. A lot of true. people talked about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. Sopranos was big. I mean, for a premium network to have a drama like that, mm -hmm. the numbers, I was not talking about numbers, I'm talking about popularity. Sopranos yeah. had a lot of, there's a lot of conversation about Sopranos. Yeah. Well, HBO really changed the game. I mean, yeah. we were talking earlier about, I mentioned Sex and the City. For my generation and for like mm -hmm. women my age and maybe Sinead's age, like I think that was something where like, I remember watching it with my friends and there would be like 25 people in the room and mm -hmm. we would all come together in this like big way. So I think it's anything that becomes communal. Say by the bell. For me, I was I, I missed now. Now two and zero was a little bit. Old. I was young. I think it was too young for that. But I think Saved by the Bell for me. What is that? Were you kidding? That's a big show. <laughs> is that not? Is that not in the I social conscious? Like that's joking. that's <laughs> a big show. I was like, that's your butt wrong. I mean, you're right. Saved it by is, the I, bell. It's it a great is. Show. You're right. You're right. Saved no, you're right. Speech on the bell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zach on the bell. <laughs> this is your patrol. Yeah. Oh, Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. Uh, so yeah, what do, what would you say? You I mean, Sopranos. Come well, on. Yeah, so obviously a... Sopranos was really discussed. Yeah. I mean, Sopran it, it, I w if Sopranos was coming out today, that's why I'm always like, I guess Ray Donovan would be the closest thing we have to like a, a, a Sopranos-esque kind of right. show. We don't really now. like no, get hyped need, about it. We need a friggin' another mob show. I need like an LA mob or like middle America, like a Chicago, not Chicago, with too many shows. Chicago mob? Right? Yeah, Chicago mob. <laughs> Men, <laughs> Men, fire, PD, <laughs> mob. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I made the they solved it joke at a, at a thing yesterday and somebody really laughed and I was like, yes. Oh, really fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I, we need another mob show like Sopranos to come along because I, like personally, I'm jonesing for it. Obviously, crime pushes the needle as far as discussion goes. What I'm saying is like, I don't think we've ever seen a show that, that pushes the needle as much as Game of Thrones does. And everybody has tried to like, I'm, this is the Game of Thrones for NBC or this is the Game of Thrones for ABC. And I feel like if Lost had existed during social media outside of Facebook, because think about all the theories. Yeah. Think right. about like, I'm ta I'm thinking about shows where I, like I stop being on social media at 5 p.m. on Sundays because Same I here. am just afraid of what yep. my, might be ruined for me. So that's my own fault. If I go on Twitter and I screw up, that's, that's on me, that's mm -hmm. my bad. I feel like back in the day with Lost, if Twitter had existed, like you wouldn't have been able to go anywhere near your phone. And we mm -hmm. actually probably could have speculated much more. There were blogs, there were conversations about it. And like there was some social media, but like, you know, Facebook was just kind of becoming like more of a thing. People were still on MySpace, like, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I feel like Well, that that's why Pretty Little Liars is such a hit, like, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. And because it's all theories, it's all theories. Yeah. During Pretty Little Liars season time, it's literally all people just sending in like essays and like emailing me essays of theories and like connecting all these dots because that's what gets people excited. Yeah, mm. yeah. And all these superhero shows, it's the same thing, but I, as far as the question goes, do you think a TV show can ever match the worldwide popularity of Game of Thrones? I don't think any show has. Mm. And I don't think that, I mean, maybe Nate, like nationally, MASH, sure, Roots, sure. I, I saw, if 
as far as like worldwide popularity goes, we've never seen anything like this. It's a total phenomenon. Like the, at, at Comic-Con, the line for the signings of Game of Thrones is longer than any other thing at the whole place. It dwarfs everything, Marvel's things, anything, all Game of Thrones. And if you're not watching Game of Thrones, it's one of those things like it, it, you, people talk about it, you're kind of out of a conversation. Sinead, get watching. Well, TV's um, taking over Comic-Con, so all the studios that aren't going to be here this year. Marvel has their own events. Correct. You know, everybody's yeah. getting out. So, I mean, TV's I mean, I feel like a loser because I don't watch it. You should. I can't believe Pretty that. That's liar. so crazy. Yeah. Listen, from one Gossip Girl lover to another. <laughs> Please watch. Please Exit. watch Game of Thrones. Guys, if I have Gossip if guy. I have all of the time in the world and not a five month old baby at home, <laughs> then I will watch Game of Thrones. All of the drinks. Yes. Uh, okay, Sinead, let's get to another question. Can all we just right. say what, can, we just have to take a moment? That body and five month old baby. Can we all just give it up for Sinead Freeze? You, you guys, Sinead Freeze. Sinead Freeze, guys. Five month old baby, that body. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. That body. Thanks. You're I like the, the uh, is that moment in uh, Varsity Blues. Like, tan. Oh. Fucking tan. <laughs> she said, tan. Tan. Fucking, fucking tan. tan. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I love that. Movie. You're coming in on whipped cream bikini at some point. <laughs> when you get to the end of Game of Thrones, no. whipped cream bikini on the I'm going to shave my chest hair into the whipped cream bikini. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay, right. What is the show turning I into? Don't want your <laughs> Again, we are very sorry, Mrs. Griffin. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Mrs. I Griffin. want the next question. Yes. All right. Joe, like 25 tweets. minutes later, Joe <laughs> Freaky tweets: Since Twitter bought the streaming rights to Thursday Night Football, could we see a Twitter-made TV show? See, see, the problem, Twitter. What were they? What were they airing? Now, I'm not saying Twitter couldn't have like Twitter studios like Amazon Studios, but they don't really have. When you see video clips on Twitter, they're not like the best resolution. No. It's like mostly GIFs. I yeah. mean, they're not. They don't have a infrastructure for that. They could create one, sure, but they don't have the infrastructure for that right I now. I will say, it's it's kind of cool that Twitter is, um, you know, going after things because uh, last year Twitter was the only social network that didn't gain subscribers. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. They they stayed stagnant if, if anything lost it because I think a lot of people outside of entertainment don't get Twitter. Like you know like because it's 140 characters. It's not Instagram. You don't see pictures everywhere. But Twitter, unlike MySpace or something like that, is changing with the times. And they're like they're realizing that if we want to get more users, we gotta provide content for them. So for the fact that they picked up streaming rights to football, awesome. Twitter starts making original content by all means. I mean, gain that subscriber base because we live and die by Twitter on this show. I mean, a lot of shows like ours, social media, whatever, Twitter is a really big deal. So if they're going to make original programming, by all means, like that's, I think it's a fantastic idea. Right, but didn't they try to do that on Snapchat? Didn't they bring in, like I'm trying to remember, it was the daughter of privilege. I'm there's a horror forgetting. movie that they filmed completely on Snapchat. Completely on yeah. Snapchat. yeah. So there's been, there's been attempts at this, but I'm trying to remember, I'm, there was some daughter of privilege, somebody who's like the daughter of somebody who's more famous, who was brought in to do a show and it only lasted for like a few months and it failed. Here's the thing. I appreciate trying to grow, but then I also appreciate staying in your lane and doing your lane really well. I don't want to go on Twitter and watch like a show. I just don't, I don't, I don't, I think that's unnecessary. Like Amazon is one thing. Cause I go on Amazon and I buy DVDs. I buy TV shows. I stream stuff. They already have music. There's all kinds of stuff I can like. And they're built into like Apple TV, Roku, yeah. they're both into your, your, if you have a smart TV, it's mm -hmm. built in. It makes sense. Know. And maybe Twitter will do that, but quite honestly, I, that's not what it's made for. I don't. Mm. I don't feel like that would be. I. I don't. I kind of don't want it. Like that's not your brand. Know your brand mm. and do mm. your brand. In my opinion. All right. Well, screw you. I mean, cool. <laughs> good. Good opinion, Sasha. Listen, Houndcock. <laughs> <laughs> this this episode uh, is titled "Sorry, Mrs. Griffin." <laughs> uh, like a Spoiler parental, alert, parental advisory yeah, warning before this one airs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we should have that anyway. That should be with the spoiler alert. We need parental the parental advisory, advisory yeah. and it'll just like Explicit. sit above my head at all times. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get you that shirt. There are kids in the room? <laughs> Come over here. Yeah. The old naughty by nature. Okay, uh, <laughs> Sinead, final Twitter question here. All right, Ilya tweets, what is your favorite non-American TV show? David. Oh, where do you start? I mean, oh my David. goodness, there are just so many. We are spoiled for choice, ladies and gentlemen, in non-American. Yes, there there is there are places in the world that exist outside of America. Do they? Oh, there are. Oh, let's, England, let, 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 let's start with a few. Let, let's see what we oh got boy. here. Here we go. <clears throat> so, Downton Abbey. Did you tweet this question no, in yourself? Yeah, this yeah. is actually me. Thank you for <laughs> this, this is my uh, go, ghost page. Um, no, Ilya. There's oh, there's a show I keep telling people to watch a show called River Ooh. on Netflix. Oh, yeah. It was Stellan Skarsgård, Papa Skarsgård. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, you watch that movie Tarzan coming out. Alexander Skarsgård, that's his papa. Is mm -hmm. it British? It is British. You it's should very watch good. it, Josh. Uh, it's very good. Uh, there's a show that Adam uh, back there got me onto called Hinterland. Is it British? Ooh. It's Welsh. 
Well, there's whales, go. people. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna and congratulations to whales first it, time it, it, in it, the it's Euro. It's a true detective of whales. That's cool. Top of the lake. Top of the, Top of the lake. lake's very good. Get season Zealand. two of that. Degrassi. Yep. Degrassi. Degrassi. Canada. Mm -hmm. Hey. Oh, also Canada. Orphan Black. Yes. Orphan mm -hmm. Black is fantastic. Uh, Orphan Black. Oh, um, I had no idea that was from Canada. Yeah. Toronto. Oh, yeah. Shoot it up yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a great show that Sherlock. I feel like. Sherlock. Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Sherlock yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there's a fantastic show that is not English. It's not English based. So you got to get down with some subtitles. But um, Deutschland 1983. It's so good. Oh, it's man. great. Deutschland 83, which was on Sundance. Yeah. That is great. I can't believe you mentioned that show. I love that show. Yeah. What no one watched it, no but one it was good. They're bring it back, yeah. and I think it's going to be like Deutschland '87. And they think, or something? No, they're, they're going to do '86. I think they have a plan 86. for '89 too, if yeah, yeah, they can. Yeah. You know, if they that's get what it. it is. And exactly. um, I, love, I lived in show. I lived oh, in Germany also, briefly. Deutschland is the bomb, and then the people over there are awesome. And that show is so cool. They have a great football team. Yeah. Uh, also, there's I know a lot of people have asked if I've seen um, Marseille. Uh, uh, which is Netflix, uh, right? was it Gerard Depardieu who was in um, Three Musketeers or yeah. The Man in the Iron Mask? Yeah. You know, a uh, famous French actor. She also peed on a plane. Yeah, also, if you on the plane. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a good show. Uh, Marseille. There's just so many you know good what's shows. Really out good, there. and it was. There's a terrible version of it on ABC. The French version of The Returned. Mm. No, that's what I watched. That's all oh, I watched. Okay. I, I never even. I haven't even seen the other one. Oh, the other one's bad. Yeah, it's called like Le Reventance or something. Uh, it, but it's the Returned. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> there's a show I've mentioned it on here before. The Inbetweeners. It's one of my favorite shows outside of America. Uh, it's English. Ah. Uh, hey, England. Loving you guys. You guys are crushing it right now. <laughs> um, I well, there's love. <laughs> there's a show that came out on Netflix this year. And it's called The Detectorists. It's only six episodes. It's with a guy that played Gareth in the British office uh. and Toby Jones. Mm. Uh, and they play, and the girl that plays uh, Ismay on Peaky Blinders is mm -hmm. in it. And it's about a metal detector club in like a really rural part of England. And it's hysterical. It's that like the awesome. most, it's so British comedy because it's not like punch you in the face, American like set up punch, set up punch. It's really, really funny. It's just like these two guys that are like these lonely dudes and they just do metal detectoring and it's super funny. That sounds Check amazing. Check out The Detectorist. It's on, it's on uh, Netflix. I love Broadchurch. Broadchurch is really good. Really good. Um, that American version was horrible. Yeah. Grace Point with Anna Gunn and David oh. Tennant with an American, a horrible American accent. David yeah. Tennant is a fantastic actor. He did not need to be in Grace Point. I'm glad that's mm. gone. Mm. Those are lots of good ones, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check them out. And don't forget to watch our review of Peaky Blinders, yeah, Peaky season Blinders, three. Yeah. Season three. It's mm -hmm. up on the Collider Video channel now. Check it out. I Killian wear, Murphy. You I wear had a great hat. hat. The best. Great hat. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was my yeah. Christmas present this year. Okay. Uh, come to the final part of the show. Uh, pick of the week. Pick of the week. David, your pick? No, it's my no. pick. Uh, oh, go, man. I'm going Orphan <laughs> Black. We just, we just, uh, we just said it in favorite non-American shows. We're gonna go Orphan Black uh, this week on Wednesday. Uh, Perry Nemiroff, uh, one of the writers on Collider.com, you guys know from Collider News, Collider Best of the Week, Collider Nightmares. Her and I are going to do a season four review with spoilers. So if you want to tune into that, it's awesome. I was turned on to Orphan Black about a month ago <gasps> by fans who just kept saying, "Watch, watch, watch." I have binged. All everything up until now this show is dark it's twisted it's really well done the girl who plays all of the clones tatiana maslani is her name the fact that she hasn't won the award all of the awards for everything always is shocking to me she plays herself and right now i think we're at like nine different clones mm -hmm. and each one is so different from the other you forget that she is playing all of them it's unbelievable it's the best acting on television maybe i've ever seen it's go watch Orphan Black. If you're not watching it, watch it immediately. It takes place in Toronto. It, the guy that plays sure. Donnie, Allison Hend yeah. Hendricks' husband, he's like, oh, that dude is like the coolest dude. You watch Orphan Black? Yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, God, She's man. incredible. So, and thank you to BBC America who gave us some screeners for that. So thank you to them for, for doing it. And we're going to do the review this week. So go check out Orphan Black. Guys, that is our show, Collider TV Talk. We're here every Monday. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, let's go around the table. Where can you find the beautiful people? Let's start with Tan. Tan. She's Shanae. Tan. She's, She's a Tan. Tan. <laughs> Tan. 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 All right, all righty, all right. Um, uh, you can find me online at Sinead DeFries on Twitter and Instagram and at that's so You can find me here on Mondays hosting TV Talk, on Friday hosting Movie Talk, and over the weekend hosting Mailbag. 
There you go. DG. Find me right here. At Mr. Giggles. At Mr. Giggles. Uh, hashtag giggle time, people. You know you need it every now and then. Everybody needs a little giggle time sometime. It's okay. And creeping at the mall. No, don't creep. Uh, you can find me at Griffin DE on Twitter, uh, as well as with Josh on Peaky Blinders Review. We're going to come back uh, next week probably with a, a preacher review. So oh, that's right. Yeah. We didn't get to give it to you this week, but we're going to be back next week for mm -hmm. that. Uh, Voltron Review coming in the future. So look for everything. All of the things, Sasha Pearl Raver. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and uh, Twitter at Sasha Pearl Raver on Fridays hosting FX Movie Download. And this Friday, we have The Heat with Paul Fegan Studio, Ooh. Nate Cordry, and oh my God, my 11 year old self dropped dead motherfucking joey mcintyre <laughs> nice. and then uh thursdays with the schmoes and mondays with you lovely uh, lovely people it's the best it's the best uh guys i'm josh mccuga you can find me on twitter and instagram at josh mccuga uh you can find me here every monday on collider tv talks thursday with the schmoes friday on film hq on the comic con comic con hq uh streaming service vod and um on my youtube channel the josh mccuga show again guys uh, we're here every Monday, and go again. Go out and hug somebody. Uh, we're in some weird times. It's way, way, way easier to be nice to somebody than it is to be mean. Treat your fellow man like you'd want to be treated. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.